My next guest takes on James Nakashima coming up here at LFA 11 on May 5th. LaRue Burley joins me here on the program for the very first time. LaRue, how are you? I'm doing good. You? I'm doing very well. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, this is the first time I've had you on the show. So I got to know, uh, how'd you get involved in combat sports? Uh, really just went into the gym one day uh, just to mess around a little bit. And 30 days later, found myself in a cage fighting. Interesting. And, you know, I was looking at your amateur career. I actually noticed you were supposed to fight Jakar Close, who's a uh, lightweight in the UFC. Um, why did that fight never happen? Uh, I don't know. It was something he couldn't pass physicals or something or something like that. I just got a call one day that he was unable to get something done or something wasn't – he didn't get cleared for it. Okay, gotcha. No, I was just curious because I noticed that was uh, kind of a notable name on your uh, amateur career there. But uh, LaRue, if uh, people are watching this interview, they probably remember you for your huge win back in 2013 when you knocked out Bubba Jenkins. Uh, That was at uh, Bellator 100. Uh, What was the reception like after that fight? Because that was a huge win for you at the time. Uh, It was was pretty big. Uh, I mean, Bellator was a little upset at me, but uh, it is what it is. I mean... But I got, I got a big fan base based off of that fight. Excellent. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but that was the fourth uh, largest um, upset uh, from a betting odds perspective. I was looking at the, the, the lines there. You were a plus 925. Uh, did any of your friends make some good money off you that night? Uh, you know what? They didn't. Okay. Uh, but I did get hit up a lot from a lot of people who did get uh, did make a lot of money. Yeah, and, and just so people at home are watching, I believe the biggest upset odds-wise was actually Sokaju defeating uh, Little Nog uh, back in Pride. So that's still pretty cool. You're, you're you know close up there and uh, we're able to get the, the spoiler. But uh, you went uh, 3-0 and in Bellator. Uh, then you went to RFA, then World Series of Fighting. Uh, why didn't you stick with Bellator? What was the reason for that? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I wanted to stay in Bellator. I was told a couple different things by... My ex-coach that Bellator said, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it was the Bubba. I, I beat him, and that was their, their, their big prospect and the big, uh, the big guy that was supposed to be the next big thing. And I don't know. I, I wanted to stay. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I was just I wasn't sure if it was one of those things where maybe you wanted you got a better offer or something like that, but a little disappointing to see they wouldn't want to keep you, especially with all the momentum you had uh, with that win over Jenkins. Um, since then, I, I know uh, you know uh, November 2015. Um, you've only fought once since then. Uh, what's sort of been the reason for the layoff? Is it just difficulty getting fights, or have you been injured? What's sort of the reason for that? A little bit of both. Uh, the last World Series fight that I lost in decision, I tore my like the inside of my whole knee in the first round. So that was a big thing. So I had to rehab the inside of my knee. I had fractured my tibula, tore partially tore my MCL and uh, tore my meniscus. So I had that took a minute to get together. And then after that, it was kind of hard to get a fight for a while. And then, that's why I had to go up in weight class. So I had to go to about 170 to fight. So uh, that was the thing. And here you are. You're taking on James Nakashima. A pretty big fight because Nakashima's undefeated. Um, how excited were you when, when you were you know put on this LFA card and taking on an undefeated prospect? Oh, uh, very excited. Uh, it wouldn't be the first prospect. Uh, it's like the fourth or fifth, so it's a good thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to get back in there, do it again. Uh, looking, uh, is an easy cut for me, so I was excited about that. I didn't have to get down to 155, which is like for me, is like 25, 30 pounds. So, and, and I was going to ask you about that. Is the plan after this go back down to 55, or do you want to stay at welterweight? Kind of see how this fight goes, and maybe maybe stay at welterweight. No, I want to go back down to 155. You know, that welterweights, it all varies. It all varies. And, and some guys are real big, and it's like, I don't really feel like being in a wrestling around with these dudes, like, almost 200 pounds. Because when I, when I fight, I, I don't weigh that much. When I fight, I'm, I'm still, like, almost 170. I barely put weight back on. So it's like, for me to fight at welterweight all the time is, like, pretty fair on uh, a disadvantage to myself. Yeah. Totally understand. Uh, Nakashima comes from the MMA lab. Uh, like I mentioned, he's undefeated. How do you feel like you match up against him? Uh, if you look at statistic-wise, I guess I do pretty good against wrestlers. Uh, but I, I've seen him. I've seen a couple of his fights. He fought one of my teammates. Uh, I think I match up real well against him. I think he's, I'm going to be his most difficult task. If he thinks he's going to come in there and just hold me or, or, or just take me down and be able to wrestle me, boy, he's going to be in for a long night. But we'll see. And, and where are you training right now, and who are some of the people helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, I'm still training at Power MMA. Uh, everybody, um, I got a good friend at Russell ASU, uh, 
Ray Waters, he's been helping me a lot. Uh, another teammate, Josh, uh, CB Dalloway, uh, they all been helping me. Uh, did a little bit of wrestling with uh, uh, Ryan Larkin. I mean, Eric Larkin, excuse me, sorry about that. Eric Larkin, he's come in and helped a little bit. So, I mean, I, I got a good, a good uh, uh, regiment this camp of wrestlers to help me get ready for this fight. And, you know, I talked to one of your other teammates recently, Jordan Larson, who told me that uh, there's been kind of a resurgence at Power MMA. I know you guys got a new coach and there's sort of been, you know, a little, little bit of a, a, you know, kind of a, I don't know what the, the word is, boost. Um, do you sort of feel that way as well, that the team's kind of really sinking right now? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a little dysfunctional with, uh, no offense to Aaron, but it was a little dysfunctional. Guys are just kind of doing their own thing. Now we got a, like a set practice where guys are getting involved and more people are there and you get the different looks that you need when, especially when you need it, like when you're in camp, because there was a few times where I was in camp and I only had like one person that would be there to help me. So this time I had everybody. Jordan was one of them. So it, it, it's been a resurgence over at power. May 5th. How do you see this fight ending between you and James Nakashima? A uh, couple different ways. Uh, but I want the knockout, of course. Uh, but I, I definitely want to go in there and totally dominate him. Uh, I want to expose all his, his weaknesses in striking. Uh, and when I, I want to stay on my feet uh, and see how it goes. And what's the plan after this? If you get a big win here, I mean, you, you would hand uh, you know Nakashima the first loss of his career. That would be a pretty nice uh, feather in your cap. Is the plan to go back to, to Bellator maybe, go to, go to the UFC? Like, what, what are you sort of looking at after this fight? Uh, it's whatever. It's whatever opportunities that may come after this. I mean, I'm not going to say, oh, it's, it's going to be one specific thing because that may not happen. So another door may open. So whatever doors are open, then, I mean, I definitely want to want to look at all my options if I get any and then see what I can do from there. I mean, I would love to be back in Bellator. I'd love to be in the UFC, but it's got to see what happens. I know I heard Dana White's supposed to be at this fight, so maybe the UFC uh, does finally give me the shot that I've been wanting. So I don't know. We'll see, but I'm definitely open to it. What do you like doing on your downtime? I know you're a busy guy, but uh, you like a Netflix guy, you a sports fan, you a video game guy. What, what would I find you doing when you're not in the cage? Uh, not really Netflix, but I do watch a lot of movies. Okay. I do watch a lot of movies. I kick it with the kids, watch a lot of movies, and uh, yeah, stay working out. Try to go get a game of hoop or basketball, you know, football in. What's a good movie you've seen recently? What would get the LaRue Burley two thumbs up? Mm. What was the last movie I seen? See, I, asked uh, the, I asked the tough questions here. Nah, I, I think Boss Baby might have been the last one. Okay, nice. What did you, you think of, of, you think of that? I've seen. Hey, you know what? It was actually pretty funny. I took the youngest one. Uh, he's four. I took him to see it. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Excellent. Good stuff, man. Well, we're looking forward to this fight. LFA 11 live on Access TV on May 5th. LaRue, can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program, especially on a Saturday. Where can people get a hold of you on social media? And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Uh, my Instagram is uh, LaRue Burley. My Twitter is LaRue Burley. My Facebook's all LaRue Burley. Uh, I want to thank my uh, sponsors. I got Venom sponsor me this, this fight. Uh, Eight Man Strong, really appreciate it. They're sponsoring me. So there's a couple of sponsors right there. Uh, I want to thank all everybody that supports me, all my fans, my friends, uh, my teammates. Everybody.